Hello, I'd like to welcome you welcome to Heretic Shadow of the Serpent Riders. Also, there's an RSAC advis advisory which says violence, blood, and gore. Wouldn't imagine that. Anyway, we're gonna go with. Mm, actually, the first campaign's not that hard, so let's do normal. Let's set up our quick save. Uh, video. There you go. Yes, I'm using the checks quest thing because it came with a funny little thing. So this game is a bit more Duke Nukem than it is Doom because you have items now. Look at that, you got an item inventory system. It's neat and the items are pretty interesting and this is uh, the Quartz Flask. The Quartz Flask heals 25 health when consumed. Pretty neat item, these are crystal flasks, heal 10 HP when picked up. Cannot be carried like Quartz Flask. This is by the way the Elven Wand, I think it is. Kind of like the pistol. Uh, this game also does not have shared a uh, uh, ammo pools like Doom used to have. So, can you can you jump in the original Heretic? I don't know because the original Heretic is a DOS thing, and I got very scared. These are switches. Uh, the game has pretty remarkable, easy to notice secrets. So, if you're looking for secrets, just look for the obvious. That'll get you miles. I will say one thing. This game is dark. For a big portion, it's really dark. Oh no, it's an enemy that we haven't seen before. They're basically imps. Uh, I think weapon damage in this game is significantly more random. And there's also enemy variations that look exactly the same. Those things, those flying things are gargoyles. I don't know what these guys are called. So those are apparently golems. That's pretty neat. Um, there's also nitro golems, which are slightly stronger and have a charge up attack like the good old-fashioned imps do. These are the Gauntlets of the Necromancer, which are s essentially the chainsaw. There's also fire gargoyles, which are like regular gargoyles. But they shoot fire and are slightly stronger, which means that the my erythral crossbow is not very good against them. Ah, the Gauntlets. Very good way of saving health. Don't, don't be too concerned with wasting your health on foolishness, because there's plenty of crystal flasks and quartz flasks around, in my opinion. That you can take a risk or two. Hopefully I get something else so I can explain things. Uh, let's see, let's go up here. Oh, could this possibly be a... Ugh, I consumed one, fuck. Oh, well, I guess I needed it anyway. Switch back to my weapon. By the way, you might notice those two heads at the bottom of the chain. That is my health bar represented by a line. If it's to the left, I am dead. If it's to the right, I am doing fine. Armor in this game is pretty scarce, so don't go too nuts with wasting it. Okay, this is the Tome of Power. The Tome of Power drastically changes how your weapons function for a limited amount of time. Weapons become more powerful or function differently to begin with. For example, this weapon starts firing two projectiles and a few more hit scan attacks, but I don't know, there's there's probably a button there somewhere. These ethereal arrows are for the ethereal crossbow. If you use the tome of power with this weapon, you will get more of those energy shots. I think about three and but not much more. I think regular attacks, the damage just goes up in general, so yeah, that's cool. That's something Chevrolet would put on their big plus. I know there's a way out of here somewhere, but I have no idea where. Hmm. Fuck that shit. I've got Z-Doom. Oh god, it's dark. Well, there is such a thing as a torch in this game, which will light up the area for a limited amount of time. And now we'll meet up with an undead warrior. These guys are 200 HP. They're pretty big and pretty tough. And they'll toss axes at you. They're not very nice. What's less nice is the fact that there are gargoyles everywhere in this game, and they are one of some of the most annoying enemies. This is the Bag of Holding, basically functions as a, what's it called, backpack from Doom. You can carry double the ammo. Uh, contains a little bit of every ammo in the game, except mace balls for some reason. 
probably where you teleport in when you find the actual supposed telepad. But guess what? I'm cheating. Ha! Ka 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 ka! Let me actually look this up real lickety split. I should have the page open. Let's see. Weapon, ethereal, crossbow, elven wand. This weapon does 10 to 80 damage with the central shot. The side bolts do 2 to 16. Powered up center bolt does 6 to 48. That's worse. But I guess there is more of them. Oh god, it's one of you guys, isn't there? They remind me of revenants, actually. I don't know if their axes are homing or not. That much I can't really tell you. But this is basically the shotgun. For all intents and purposes, you just use it as a shotgun. It's more effective at close range. You want to focus fire, blah, 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 blah. Elven wand. It does 7 to... 7 to 14 damage. That's pretty good. It's pretty... It's in check. It does 1 to 8 hit powered hit scan. It does 1 to 8 powered projectile. That's pretty nice. So this is pretty much always what the exit looks like. It's this little g blue thingamajig, and I don't, I'm not going to bother with all the secrets. I am going to bother with the secret exit, so give me a moment while I look up where the secret in this world is. It is in the cathedral. I don't know how to get it, but I don't know how to get there with Z-Doom. Let's do another level, you know? Let's just, just, just kick it off with a good start. Ah, yes, with that bag of holding, we can pick up... Okay, that is the claw, dragon claw. That is the uh, claw orbs, which are used to power it. I don't know what to call it. There is a weapon that reminds me... No, 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 no. I don't think it is more a plasma gun, if anything, though not as strong. The dragon claw is a hitscan weapon, but it takes up a massive portion of the screen, making it near impossible to actually see anything. That's the yellow door. By the way, this game marks on your map what color doors have, so which key you require. That's so polite. Like I said, there's way too many of these guys. Every fucking round. No. Yeah, that probably would have... Oh, wow. See, these guys come out of nowhere. They're just suddenly there. Hey, look, I'm a guy, and I'm, and I'm here. God damn it, man. I couldn't even see that guy. God damn it. Now the game is slowing down and I'm stuck. <gasps> damn it, man! Stop this! Maybe it was a bad idea to play on the higher difficulty level, or maybe it wasn't. I'm going to scour the lands for crystal flasks. Vials, or veils. Oh, pistachio nuts, who gives a shit? There's something, that's all the... Slightly itchy neck, it's always annoying when your neck is slightly itchy. It's not itchy enough that you're like, Arr. it's like itchy. It's itchy, you know it, and there's nothing you can do about it. Fuck, I'd give my, my life for a torch right about now. Well, there's a key and some claw orbs. And because of the, the Tome of Power in this game, there's a lot more... Okay, that's a silver shield. That gives me 100 armor. That's great. That's really gonna help out. Um, like I said, armor's rare in this game, which is why there's so much health everywhere. Man, what is with this slight itch that I have? Um, 
Let me actually do something. Uh, I gotta think. 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 The secret is revealed, by the way. Oh, thank God, a quartz flask. I just used the Tome of Power. That's okay. So this is your staff. It now gets a powerful knockback effect, and I think it deals more damage. These gauntlets will now not only look very cool, but they'll also drain health. That's really useful if you're in a pickle and need a bit of health and there's nothing to get. Your, like I said, now it fires projectiles and five hit scan attacks. So now we have the Dragon Claw. The Dragon Claw's powerful attack launches several spiked orbs that will deal several damage per tick. The weapon's firing rate is, is slightly reduced, but it's still quite powerful. Let me actually look it up. Let's just not, yeah, let's just, yeah, let's, no, you should pro, no, let's just, hey, what, what, who, what, who, what, where, what, who, what, where. Uh, I'm not prepared for this, but I don't like studying. Okay, so, the staff does 5 to 20 damage, 18 to 81. Holy for shits. That could knock someone over, wow. Scotland of the Necromancer, it does 2 to 16 damage. That's, okay... Oh, with the Tome of Power, it gains increased attack range, and it can drain enemies, equal to half damage dealt, rounded down. That's... this weapon is always effective on... Oh, we'll meet ghosts eventually, and I'll explain what they are when we get there. <sighs> the power projectile does 2 to 16 damage, the small orbs do 1 to 8 damage per tick inside an enemy, and the main attack does 4 to... F 32 damage. That's pretty nice. So that's pretty neat. As you can see, the icon in the top right represents that something is active, and you should always keep track of that when you're using items, because you might run out and then you get this. It's got power, but it's basically just a minigun. And be careful here, because there's a bunch of goons around the corner. By the way, if I can make a recommendation... Uh, use hit scan weapons on the gargoyles. It is very, it is remarkably effective on them because they're flying, and it's very difficult to hit them with a projectile like this one. I like it though because the shotgun was really overpowered because it was instantaneous, which meant you could just snipe people with it, so to speak. Uh, we're running out of ammo here, so let's go to this gun and see what we can do with this. So let's see on the map. Make sure that we're going the right way. These are essentially exploding barrels, but in some situations they are able to reproduce and clone themselves. See those little seedlings? If they land on the ground, new ones sprout out. The good part is they don't hurt you. Unless they explode, of course. We're gonna see a ghost yet, or is it just too early for the game to start pushing those out? Oh my, what a suspicious wall. Oh yeah, these are our these are time bombs of the ancients! One place down, this thing basically turns into a bomb that will explode after a sh short, predetermined amount of time. They're very effective when you're followed by plenty of gargoyles and don't want to waste your ammo on them. This is a map scroll. It's essentially just the auto map update device that gives you all the information you'll ever need. Gotta love those time bombs. If you use the items, this game is a lot easier, especially if you know how to use them correctly. I don't know how to use them correctly, so please, give me as many kicks on my butts as you can. This is the Shadow Mask. It does exactly what you expect it to do. It basically makes you invisible. Is that really what it does? Because that will be shit. Let's see. Uh, Shadow Sphere. The Shadow Sphere will make the player invulnerable to the axes thrown by Undead Warrior, making him particularly useful. Note that the melee axe will still cause damage. Give the Heretic the Ghost attribute for 60 seconds, becoming translucent and gaining immunity to non-magical attacks, such as the Fire Mace's attacks. It also decreases the chance of hitting... of... okay. So that's a pretty good thing, actually, because when you're a ghost, or when you're facing a ghost, you become translucent. Ghosts are only affected by magical attacks, like the central projectile. The side projectiles of this attack cannot hurt them. Uh, there's a few other attacks, I think, that also don't work on ghosts. I could look at a real lickety split if you give me a second. Um, that's really good that you can turn into a ghost, because it really renders a lot of enemies moot. Here you go, ghost. 
Goats cannot be hit by the following attacks. Staff, either mode, ethereal crossbows, the small side bolts, the phoenix rod, the normal fireball. Splash damage will still harm them. The phoenix rod is basically the rocket launcher of this game. Where do I need to go? Let's, I think I'm probably going to go across this. Oh, I'm not going to go over there with that over there. The fire mace, either mode, and the undead green warriors and green glowing axes. That's pretty neat. They can be harmed by other attacks, such as the Gauntlets of the Necromancer, the Elven Wand, the Ethereal Crossbow, Central Bolt, the Dragon Claw, Hellstaff, and the Phoenix Rod. Pass. Blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit. So that's a pretty good item, actually. I think it's more powerful in multiplayer, but the erraticness of enemy attacks is really useful. Also, this game is significantly more crushers than Doom did. But hey, free Quartz Flasks. I do wish that they managed to up sort of the effectiveness of the uh, item switching. Because it's a little bit unwieldy. You have to first switch the item and then press use item in order to equip the item itself. Look at how dark this is. How am I supposed to see anything but myself? These are the wings of wrath. When used, you can move, you can fly basically. That's really it. That's all there is to say about it is that you can fly. You can fly around, you can press buttons. You're not very fast up and down, so I recommend staying on your toes and knowing what you're doing. Sometimes it's required to obtain certain secrets, so you might want to keep one around for a bit. Energy orbs. I think there's going to be about 50 of those energy uh, for the claw. For Dr. Claw. Anyway, if you go down here, this thing goes down, but another thing that goes down is this, which gives you access to another silver shield. Which is great. I I'm surprised I had to mention that, but whatever. So this is the torch, basically. It lights up the area for a bit. It doesn't have an icon in the top right, because you can see when the torch stops working, because then everything gets dark and it starts flashing. I think the normal night vision goggles did that too. A secret is revealed. I like how it, s how it postulates that, like, a secret is revealed. Like, not you found a secret, but one has revealed itself. In our long and weary world, a secret. Also, you can see purple areas. That is basically what counts as the secret. In case you didn't figure that out yourself. Where's the blue door? Oh, it's over there. So we gotta go to the yellow door. You shouldn't do that too much, though. Especially on Duke Nukem 3D. Flying auto map. Or as I like to call it, autopilot. You're guaranteed to walk into someone! I think we've got a few enough orbs to start shooting a bit. There's almost always an enemy in the final room. Look at that, look at that sprint can score. Well, 60 minutes, I think we've done enough for today. I don't like this quick save feature because it's not a quick save. I still have to say what I want. What I really, really want. Oh god, I hate you so much. I think it's 40 for the regulars and 80 for the big guys. Dragon Claw is really good, but one problem I have with the Dragon Claw, it takes up a large portion of the screen where you're shooting, which m basically means that while the weapon accuracy isn't too bad, play accuracy goes down. Also, the first shot of this weapon is always pinpoint perfect. See? See, if you don't hold down the button, you might find yourself in a bit of luck. Anyway, if you can jump, you can pick up this Dragon Claw early. Otherwise, you have to wait until a bit later. This level's quite confusing, and I suggest you keep track of everything that happens and where you are. You might want to hold on to that silver shield for a bit, though. Can I... can I... shit. 
I think we have to press that button to go on, but whatever. Wait, but that's how you open this. So that is how you open the secret. Well, I guess we might as well go ahead and get the secret then, right? I thought I was clear when I said that this game is dark. Oh god, there they are. All the fucking fire gargoyles in the entire fucking world decided to come to a visit. You can say, well, that's bad. You shouldn't jump. He can't jump in here with Dick. Doesn't really matter because these two secrets are pretty much interlaced. Here you go. See, now I'm on the other one. Dear God, there's like all the gargoyle Jimmins. Switch to my staff so I can take care of him. Energy orb, that's nice. I like one of those. I think it's with every weapon that the first shot is always picture perfect. That's pretty cool. Aw, oh, quiver. No, it's just just like a regular box of shotgun shells. I think about 20 or something. No, no. So the one thing I like about this game is that weapons don't become ineffective as you play the game, like, the crossbow remains useful throughout the game, the, the the regular elven staff has some effectivity against, just because the game never really switches beyond the the big guys. You can always just switch back to your elven one and go, ha ha And with the Tome of Power, it can become a powerhouse of a weapon. It can take care of small clusters of enemies really fast. Oh no, whoever saw this coming? The answer is I did, because I think I already played through most, uh, I think I played through most of Heretic Realm 1. By the way, I am using Chex Quest's Z-Doom thing, if I didn't already mention that. <laughs> because it's significantly easy. There's the exit. So let's, let's, let's cut it at this. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you all enjoyed. If you get Heretic, get Z-Doom. Because, else you'll be stuck with DOSBox, and I don't like DOSBox because it freaks me out that something that isn't even a graphical user interface is running on my computer. It's super spooky. Still no ghosts in this game, though. That kind of surprises me.